The Daija Arcade Stick by French Peripherals manufacturer Knock-On featured a central PCB that was laggy. Really laggy. It was quite the case for some time until back in March of this year. Knock-On finally issued a firmware driver for the Daija likely designed to reduce the latency. But is it really the case? I'm the Phantom Knot here testing it out. For those who have a Daija but haven't upgraded to the latest firmware, here's how it's done. You can find the zip file for the driver on the Daija's product page, knock on support page, or even download directly down below in the video description. After unpacking, the first thing you want to do is go to the USB driver subfolder and choose either the x64 or x86 installers in DPINST. This is to make sure you install the proper bootloader drivers. You can then proceed to the knockon underscore arcade underscore stick underscore v 2.04 installer. You are then prompted to put your Daija in PC mode and holding both options in share when plugging in. Once prompted, you can proceed with the installation of the firmware. Now you can enjoy lower latency. You might be asking though, how is the latency? Based on Wide's light testing solution in which I used an Arduino combined with a USB host shield, the combination analyzes 1000 continuous inputs. So let's see the results. First up is the PlayStation 4 mode. Under normal circumstances when plugged into a console or PC, the polling rate of the stick is set to 4 milliseconds, referred to by Wide as usual mode. The Daija averages at 4.4 milliseconds of lag and correctly inputs within the frame 74% of the time. The stock firmware averages at 17 milliseconds and only 4% of those inputs triggering on time. The PlayStation 3 and PC modes get the low latency treatment as well, scoring similarly. They were previously victims of the latency issue, but not anymore. Definitely a major improvement. The only anomaly in the new firmware is that the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 highest latency output is at around 12 milliseconds, but these spikes are very seldom. Looking at Wyatt's compiled list of tested sticks and controllers, the Daija is now in the ballpark of the Hori PS4 Fighting Edge and the Real Arcade Pro N. It's no Brook Universal Fighting Board though, but nothing has topped the king so far. As long as you update it, you should be good with the Daija when playing competitively. In addition, let's look at the Daija when pulled at 1 millisecond, or overclock mode. This information is useful for those who might use devices that force the stick or controller at a lower rate such as the excellent undamped USB decoder. On all modes, the Daija now averages at 2.9 to 3 milliseconds of lag and inputs right on frame 83 to 84% of the time compared to stock firmware. This is also a major improvement. I'm glad Nakon were able to resolve these concerns of lag. For those considering getting a Daija for a stick, I can recommend it now. While its feature set isn't necessarily unique from other sticks such as the Razer Pantera, I would consider the Daija as a solid alternative. Knockon should be looking to get the stick sold outside of Europe though. Ever since getting an import version of the Daija, I found it ever fascinating with the weird traits such as the faux Velux layout and the anti-slip bottom pad smelling like cigarettes. While I use another stick as my main, I might use the Daija as an alternative more often thanks to the firmware. I would also like to thank Wide for making the Arduino based lag testing device. While I previously used the counter hit slash trade tested videos I worked on in the past, this method is a lot more detailed and invaluable. For a full technical latency breakdown of the Daija, click the link below. If you want to test your sticks, visit inputlag.science for more info. As for me, thank you for watching.